Why did Damien Hirst preserve a tiger shark in formaldehyde solution? Damien Hirst's preserved shark piece might not mean much without its Title The Physical Impossibility of Death in the Mind of Someone Living, 1991 Hearst, 1965, garnered early critical success as a member of the Young British Artists and works in a variety of media, making paintings, prints, sculptures, and installations. Hearst's Pickled Shark, like much of his work, features dead animals and is thematically focused on death and the frailty or fragility of human existence. The once fierce and dynamic shark is now frozen. His dangerous teeth preserved in formaldehyde and kept under glass. A living, breathing beast is now as immobile and impersonal as any other example of ready-made pop art. Hearst's preserved shark has been criticized by many as a stunt. And by others who claim Hearst's work shouldn't even be considered art at all. But, Hearst has been very successful overall, both critically and financially. Earning millions of dollars for his pieces, as well as the prestigious British Turner Prize for Art in 1995. Did Chinese painting change during the Qing dynasty? The Qing dynasty was a Manchurian imperial power that ousted the previous Ming rulers and controlled China from 1644 to 1911. For many Chinese especially Ming loyalists, this political shift was dramatic and frightening. However, although the Manchurians were a foreign power, they adopted many Chinese art traditions favored by the Ming. Multiple schools of painting developed during the Qing era, including the Orthodox school which drew inspiration from the earlier literati painters, and the individualist school. Individualist painters focused on expressing their personal feelings during the tumultuous time of the Qing takeover. Leading painters of the era included Shi Tao, 1642-1707. An individualist painter who traced his ancestry to the first Ming Emperor. When the Qing took over Beijing, he fled and went into hiding, and then became a Chan Buddhist monk. He wrote extensively on art theory, including his most well known tract Sayings on Painting from Monk Bitter Gourd, which espoused the significance of the single brush stroke. His work balances expressive energy with soft tones and is notable for its tendency toward abstraction and use of negative space to create a sense of depth. Shi Tao was one of the most famous individualist painters because of his innovative manipulations of traditional forms of Chinese painting. What is the difference between weaving and tapestry? Both terms represent a way to make cloth or fabric, though each requires a different technique. In weaving, a thread known as the warp thread is attached vertically to 
a loom while the web thread is crisscrossed horizontally with the warp. Combinations of different colors and patterns create different textiles. Weaving has been around for thousands of years. The oldest woven cloth, discovered in Turkey, dates from 7000 BCE tapestry is a specific type. Of weaving in which the warps are hidden, and are often used for decoration and wall hanging. Who was Benjamin West? Benjamin West, 1738-1820, was an American-born painter who studied in Philadelphia and Rome before establishing a successful career as a history painter in London, making him the first American artist. With such a successful international career, he even served as president of the British Royal Academy of Art after Joshua Reynolds and was financially supported by a powerful patron, King George III. West's historical paintings strongly adhered to neoclassical conventions, however, in a surprising change from tradition. West's The Death of General Wolfe, 1770, depicted contemporary, rather than historical events and included images of the king's army wearing their contemporary uniforms, not ancient dress. Although the king, and Joshua Reynolds, aggressively disliked this change, it proved extremely popular amongst the public. The king changed his tune, and named West the royal history painter. What is the Church of Tugasu? Built in the late 16th century by Giacomo della Porta. The Church of Il Gisu has what is considered to be the first Baroque facade in architecture. The church was built in Rome for the Order of the Jesuits. Its plan was similar to the traditional cruciform basilica plan, with a long nave and aisles. It was topped with a cupola, a small dome. More shocking at the time was the church's exterior. The fagate is divided into two stories and blends Roman, Greek, and Renaissance architectural motifs such as doubled pilasters, engaged columns, arched pediments, triangular pediments, niches, windows, Corinthian capitals, and large, scrolling volutes. Despite the many disparate elements, the church fagate is not overwhelming or chaotic. Patterns emerge to create a rich, unified space. The ornamental fagate of the Church of Il Gisu greatly inspired the elaborate architecture of the Baroque period. What is lithography? Lithography is a method of printmaking in which the artist draws an image on a smooth, polished stone with a special dense crayon. Ink applied to the surface of the stone clings to the greasy crayon, allowing the lithographer to press the image and make a print. Developed in the late 18th century, lithography allows the artist to draw freely without carving.
What were Ashoka's pillars? Ashoka was considered one of the greatest emperors of the Iron Age Mora Empire. Located in the eastern portion of modern day India. Ashoka converted to Buddhism, formalized a legal code according to Buddhist principles, and spread Buddhist teachings across his land by inscribing monolithic stones with his code. These stone pillars reached as high as 40 feet tall and are said to symbolize the Axis Mundi or the Axis of the world. The pillars mark the coming together of heaven and earth, as well as pilgrimage sites associated with the Buddha. The tops of the pillars were elaborately carved and often depict back to back open mouthed lions, which proclaim Buddha's message for all who will listen. What is the work of Ace? Also known as the carved vase of Uruk, the work of Ace is a three foot tall alabaster vase found by archaeologists near the White Temple. The vase is decorated with stories that have been divided into registers, or bands. Almost like a comic strip that tells a story of humans making offerings to the gods. The lowest register depicts the natural world of water. And plants while above this are domesticated animals. The middle register features nude men holding baskets. And the top register shows a king giving an offering to the Sumerian goddess Inanna. The figures in the registers are shown with their heads and legs in profile view. But with torsos and shoulders in a three-quarter view. How is the Italian Renaissance different from the Renaissance in Northern Europe? The Renaissance is said to have started in Italy and spread slowly north into the rest of Europe. This is not quite true, however. While the Italians were especially interested in classical art, they lived amongst Roman ruins after all. Artists from northern European countries such as France, Germany and the Netherlands had different interests. While artists of the Italian Renaissance were interested in the idealized nude, classical architecture, and single point perspective, Northern European painting of the time is characterized by intense realism and attention to detail. Northern artists were interested in the material quality of objects in the visible world. Important artists of the Northern Renaissance include Jan van Eyck, Roger van der Weyden, and Klaus Slutter. What was so revolutionary about Crisio's boy? Crisio's boy about 470 B. C. E. is damaged. His arms appear lopped off at the elbow and his legs, with no feet, and in stumps. His hair is like a stylized bowl with a rim of curls. And yet, this dusty relic represents one of the most 
important and exciting innovations in the history of art. Crisio's boy is not a mere archaic sculpture. He does not stare straight ahead with a vacant look in his eyes. Crisio's boy shifts his body weight to one side. With hips tilted. One leg is slightly bent. This position is called the contraposto style. Contraposto literally means counterpose. With this small shift, Crisio's boy appears much more alive than his previous counterparts. There is a small curve in his spine, and his head is turned slightly to one side. This is a freestanding sculpture in the round. And the gently curving movements of Crisio's boy invite the viewer to make a 360 degree tour around him. Gone is the playful archaic smile. Instead, Crisio's boy is solemn, and serious. A youthful athlete, Crisio's boy represents Greek ideals of youth. Manhood, and physical and mental strength. Who was Sophonis by Anguissala? It is true that most professional artists in Europe at this time were men. It was not easy for women to be accepted by patrons and male-dominated guilds. There were women artists, however, and the women who painted professionally were usually part of artist families. Such as Katerina van Hemessen and the Baroque painter Artemisia Gentileschi, the Cremonese painter. Sophonis by Anguissala, c. 1532-1625, was different. She was the oldest of seven children in a noble family. Whose father was a classical enthusiast interested in giving a humanist education to all of his children. He recognized Sophonis Ba's natural talent and sent her to train under a respected local painter. Bernardino Campi. She gained esteem for her portraits, including a number of engaging self-portraits, as well as paintings of the Virgin Mary. She was asked by King Philip II of Spain to serve as a lady-in-waiting to his third wife. Isabel de Valois, an extremely high honor written about by Giorgio Vasari. There. She painted portraits of the queen and experimented with mirrors in her self-portraits. In 1552 she painted a miniature portrait, a popular way of depicting friends and loved ones. In which she depicted herself holding a large medallion. Her name encircles the edge of the medallion while an interlaced. Monogram made up of her sister's names is in the center. The miniature is now at the Museum of Fine Arts, Boston. What is porcelain? Porcelain is a type of fine ceramic that supposedly got its name from Marco Polo. Who first visited China from Europe in the 13th century? There are two types of porcelain, hard paste, known as true porcelain. And soft paste, known as artificial porcelain. Hard paste porcelain was first developed in China in the 7th or 8th century. And wasn't seen in Europe until the early 18th century. 
Porcelain is made of fine white clay and requires a very high temperature in the kiln when fired. Blue and white painted porcelain from the Ming period is among the most expensive and most highly sought after ceramics in the world. Ming painters used cobalt glazes from Persia and designed heavily outlined images. Dragons and nature themes were very popular. Who were the Fav? Considered the first modernist movement of the 20th century, the so-called Fav. Or Wild Beasts were a loosely associated group of artists working in Paris who used bright. Garish colors in an unusually expressive way. The group included Henri Matisse, 1869-1954, André de Rain, 1880-1954. And Maurice de Vlamanc, 1876 to 1958, among other artists known as Fauvets. Their name came from French art critic Louis Vox Cellas, who was shocked by the brashness of the art on display at their Salon d'Automne in Paris in 1905. The Fauve used bold colors to express emotions. And they were inspired by Gauguin's use of color and Seurat's Pointel list. Experiments in which he placed divergent colors next to one another to make them pop. A good example of the Fauvist style is Matisse's The Woman with the Hat, 1905. A painting purchased by renowned modern art collectors Leo and Gertrude Stein. Matisse used loose brush strokes and bright, seemingly inappropriate colors to construct. The image of a woman holding a white fan and wearing a disproportionately large hat. The woman's nose is composed of the same green color that is. Splashed across the background and her neck is deep orange. The Fauve were free from the restrictions of a realist color palette. And with this freedom they went on to experiment with other styles and help to usher in 20th century modernism. What are major characteristics of Chinese painting from the Sui to the Yuan dynasties? The range of Chinese art covered in this chapter is immense. And while it is difficult to summarize such a varied history into one answer, there are indeed important attributes common to many examples of Chinese painting from this time period. Unlike medieval painters in Europe, Chinese painters did not paint on wood panels. Instead, they painted on silk or paper, usually with water-based inks and colorful pigments. The practice of painting was considered an intellectual exercise with close ties to Confucian and Buddhist philosophies. Early Chinese paintings often exhibit a balance of seemingly spontaneous movement with thoughtful calm. Artists favored landscapes and nature scenes, as well as realistic figurative paintings. Why is the cover of the Lindau Gospel so luxurious? This astonishing book cover, decorated with pearls, sapphires, emeralds, garnet. 
and gold, was not originally intended for the 9th century Lindau Gospels. Though it has been associated with this manuscript since before the 16th century. The book cover was made at a monastic workshop during the reign of Charles the Bald. Charlemagne's grandson, who ruled from 840 to 877, and represents Christ on the cross. Christ is surrounded by mourning figures. But stands erect with his palms forward, and stares powerfully ahead. The work was made in a style known as repousse. Which means the figures were hammered into low relief from the back of the metal cover. The fine gold reflects glittering light, and the jewels evoke heavenly Jerusalem. The obvious luxury of the cover indicates the inherent value of books during the medieval period. And the richness of the materials emphasize the triumph of Christ, foreshadowing the resurrection. What is the Corinthian order? The Corinthian order was the last of the three classical Greek orders of architecture to develop. The tallest and most elaborate of the three orders, a Corinthian column is built at a ratio of approximately 13 colon 1. Which means the height of the column is 13 times taller than the width. Originally designed for interior use. The Corinthian order features a capital decorated with flowers and leaves of the acanthus plant. While the Doric and Ionic order feature a corniced entablature, the Corinthian entablature is flat. According to the Roman architect and writer Vitruvius, and later repeated by the Renaissance writer Vasari. The artist and poet Kali Machus was inspired to design the Corinthian capital after seeing a basket of overgrown acanthus leaves placed in front of a young girl's grave in the Greek city-state of Corneth. The Temple of Olympian Zeus is a Hellenistic temple that was started using the Doric order, but finished years later using the Corinthian order. The temple's massive columns are over 55 feet high. Classically inspired modern buildings continue to incorporate the Corinthian design. Including the General Post Office in New York and the U.S. Capitol Building. What is constructivism? Constructivism made a major impact on other 20th century movements such as Bauhaus and Astigl. Like Supermatism, constructivism was highly influenced by both Cubism and Futurism and emphasized abstraction and the purity of geometric forms. The movement was founded by Russian painter and architect. Vladimir Tatlin, 1885-1953, who created sculptural constructions. Interestingly, Tatlin did not consider himself a constructivist but rather a productivist. Though his work is considered to be at the heart of the movement. Tatlin made his sculptural assemblages out of industrial materials such as wood, plaster, glass, and metal. He also believed that art served an important social purpose, and the constructivist movement is tied 
to the radical political changes that occurred in Russia during the October Revolution in 1917. Constructivist Artists believed that art could play an important role in the creation of a new, utopian society. One of the key elements of constructivism, is the idea that a work of art, whether a painting or a sculpture, is created by assembling so-called autonomous elements. For example, a sculpture is made up of individual elements such as a line and a plane. This new concept conceived of sculpture as an additive, rather than reductive process. Materials are compiled, rather than carved away. And this had a major impact on painting, architecture, and design in the 20th century. What is art informal? Art informal, also known as both Tashism and lyrical abstraction, was essentially the European equivalent of American abstract expressionism. With an emphasis on non geometric abstraction, spontaneity, and expressive brushwork. In French, the word tach, of Tashism, means splotch. Referring to the manner in which paint has been blotted onto the canvas. Artists associated with art informal include Jean Fourier, 1898-1964, Hans Hartung. 1904-1989, and Alfred Otto Wolfgang Schultz, better known as Wohls, 1913-1951. The work of Jean Dubuffet, which is associated with Art Brut, is also sometimes categorized as Art Informal. What is the post and lintel system? The post and lintel system is the oldest and simplest architectural construction in which two upright forms, called posts, support the load of a horizontal beam, known as a lintel. The posts must be strong, and close, enough to prevent the lintel from weakening in the middle. Especially if the lintel is carrying the heavy load of a wall or a roof. How did the ancient Chinese cast bronze? The ancient Chinese used a technique known as piece mold bronze. Casting to make their ritual vessels and other bronze work. The first step was to make a clay model of the entire piece, including all of the decorations. Another heavier clay was then packed around this model, which formed a mold. After the clay dried, the mold was cut into pieces which released the interior model. The mold, now reassembled, could be filled with molten bronze. Bronze, an alloy of tin and copper, plus other metals, becomes molten at one. 800 degrees and requires an enormous amount of labor to manipulate. How can a slab of stone or a stretched canvas slathered in paint cost so much?
First, art is not only cultural object but also a commodity and is therefore affected by economic factors, such as supply and demand. This might account for the fact that the price of art often rises once the artist has passed away. Second, art is very much a luxury item and therefore a status symbol. The owner of Damien Hirst's $12 million preserved shark. Officially titled The Physical Impossibility of Death in the Mind of Someone Living, publicly demonstrates a great deal of wealth. It is perhaps the very fact that art serves no practical purpose that drives up the price. Who was Hieronymus Mausbosch? Hieronymus Bosch, 1450-1516, was a successful painter from the Netherlands who painted large, complex, usually Christian-themed works of art that continue to puzzle viewers and scholars to this day. An example of his imaginative and highly skilled work is the triptych, The Garden of Earthly Delights, which depicts the Garden of Eden on the left, earthly life in the center, and hell on the right. On the exterior of the triptych, Bosch painted what scholars believe is the creation of the earth. The Garden of Earthly Delights is filled with surreal imagery. Such as a bulbous pink fountain, a sharp knife with a pair of human ears. Figures cavorting inside transparent spheres, and monsters feeding on souls in hell. While some scholars believe certain images are metaphors for alchemy. A tradition of science and philosophy focused on turning various metals into gold. The work is generally considered to be a critique of human behavior, suggesting that sin will be punished in hell. Peter Brueck held the Elders Netherlandish Proverbs, 1559. Also known as the topsy-turvy world, is similarly focused on human folly. What is a vault? Common in medieval church architecture, vaults come in many forms. Essentially, a vault is an arched roof structure that covers an interior space. A semicircular barrel vault, also known as a tunnel vault, is the simplest form. A groin vault is the name given to two intersecting barrel vaults. What is post-impressionism? Post-impressionism is a tricky category. The term literally means after impressionism, though the fact that some artists are considered both impressionists and post-impressionists, like Paul Cezanne and Georges Seurat, doesn't help. Neither does the fact that most of these artists went through an impressionist phase. And that some are also considered to be neo-impressionists, a term invented by 19th century. Art critic Felix Finian to describe pointillism, a style attributed to Seurat. Regardless, the term post-impressionism is used to describe late 19th century art that rejects the spontaneity of impressionism. 
and is characterized by bright colors and defined brush strokes. Post-impressionist artists were not as eager as the impressionists to dissolve form in their work. And therefore post-impressionism can be recognized by its relatively clear outlines. The most important post-impressionists include Paul Cezanne, Vincent van Gogh, and Paul Gauguin. And other significant artists include Georges Seurat, and Henri de Toulouse-Lautrec, among others. What is an altarpiece? An altarpiece is a painted wood panel, usually placed on the altar in a church. Altarpieces come in many forms. One of the most common types of altarpieces is the triptych. So named because it is made up three connected panels. Often, the panels of a triptych are hinged and the outer panels can be closed like doors. Revealing additional exterior paintings. An altar piece with only two panels is called a diptych, while an altar piece with many panels, such as the Ghent altar piece, discussed in the following section, is known as a polyptych. What is video art? While artists such as Andy Warhol had experimented with film and video recordings. Video art was born in 1965 when Fluxus artist Nam June Paik filmed the streets of New York City with his brand new Sony portable video camera and showed the videos mere hours later at a cafe. Video art, which is a medium, not a style, in the way that oil painting is a medium. Represents a transition from mass media influence to television influence. Video art can take many forms, from use in sculpture and installations. To performances and videos can be broadcast live or recorded and displayed in various settings. In 1996, Douglas Gordon won the British Turner Prize for his video work 24 Hour Psycho, 1996. Contemporary video artists include Bill Viola, 1951, Matthew Barney, 1967. Creator of the Cremaster film series, and Canadian Stan Douglas, 1960, among many others. How did Cezanne astonish Paris with an apple? Paul Cézanne, 1839-1906, is considered one of the most significant post-impressionists and an artist who made a lasting impact on modern art. His earlier work was in line with the Impressionists and even influenced by Romanticism. But as he matured, he began to emphasize form over narrative. This means that Cezanne became more concerned with creating an awareness of the physical qualities of his paintings than with telling any particular stories. Cezanne still lives, such as Still Life with Apples, c. 1875 to 1876, use color, rather than outline, to create form. He didn't always use a brush, 
but often applied paint to the canvas directly with his palette knife. Cezanne wanted to push the boundaries of art, wanted to make an impression. To astonish Paris with an apple as he said. The apples in still life with apples are an arrangement. Much like the undefined smudges of Whistler's Nocturne in black and gold. Brightly colored against a darker background. The apples have a life of their own and engage the viewer by bobbing in an abstract, gravity-free space. Cezanne's apples are not mere fruit, but are painted forms that morph the still life into an association of structures built by color, rather than subject. What is a Fang Ding? A Fang Ding is a square or rectangular vessel with four legs and is an example of Ritual bronze made during the Shang Dynasty, one of China's earliest dynasties, c. 1700 to 21138 BCE. Bronze vessels like the Fang Ding were associated with ancient Chinese shamanism and were used to hold food and wine offerings during religious ceremonies. Many Fang Ding have been found in royal tombs, the largest vessel discovered weighs over 240 pounds. They were often decorated with intricate animal and geometric motifs. Who was Henry Osawa Tanner? Henry Osawa Tanner, 1859-1937, was the first internationally renowned African-American artist and was the most successful African-American artist of the 19th century. He studied under Thomas Aikens at the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Art and later moved to Paris, where he spent the majority of his career. Tanner is often considered a realist painter. For example, while the Annunciation, 1898, is a common biblical subject. Tanner includes realistic details he drew from his travels in the Middle East, such as clothing styles and interior. Decoration that visually grounds the Virgin's Mary's divine encounter with the angel Gabriel. Tanner's most famous painting, the Banjo Lesson, 1893, is a quiet depiction of an elderly black man teaching a young boy to play the banjo. The painting emphasized the dignity of the scene during a time when similar scenes would have been rendered as comical or stereotypical. Like the paintings of French realists such as Millet and Courbet. Tanner's work exhibits social awareness and a sense of monumentality. Tanner's later work was predominantly religious. As the artist preferred to paint biblical subjects that reflected the struggles of 19th century African Americans. What is the subject of a work of art? The subject is what a particular work of art represents. Recognizing the subject of a work of art is a good first step. 
in understanding what meaning the piece might be communicating. Not all works of art have a subject. For example, an abstract sculpture might not be representational. But that does not mean the sculpture expresses no meaning. What is avant-garde art? As with many art terms, the word avant-garde comes from French and roughly translates to vanguard. Avant-garde art is art that is on the front lines. And the term can be used to describe any innovative or new modern art. The experimentations of avant-garde artists, writers, and thinkers often cause shock, and even anger, among critics and general audiences. The mid-19th century paintings of Edouard Manet, especially Olympia and Déjeuner sur Elherbe, shocked audiences for their confrontational nudity and manipulation of traditional subject matter. Throughout the late 19th and 20th centuries, waves of avant-garde movements have continued to ruffle feathers and push boundaries. From Monet's impressionist experimentations, to Cubism, to Duchamp's Fountain, 1917. What is Fluxus? Fluxus is a difficult to describe anti-art movement, sometimes called Neo-Dada. Promoted informally by an international group of artists who were interested in the relationship between art and life. The term Fluxus was invented in 1961 by the Lithuanian-American artist George Maciunas. The word itself comes from Latin and means to flow. Artists associated with Fluxus include, among others, Joseph Buys, 1921-1986, George Brecht, 1926-2008, Nam June Paik, 1932-2006, Yoko Ono, 1933, and Lamont Young, 1935. An experimental composer and performance artist. The artist Dick Higgins, 1938 to 1998, created a rubber stamp upon which he explained Fluxus as a way of doing things. A tradition, and, a way of life and death, as quoted in Dempsey 229. Fluxus art was inherently collaborative. Artists work together to create pieces by sending art through the mail, for example. Collaborative Fluxus festivals or Flux concerts featured experimental music and other types of short, fast paced performances. Fluxus defies narrow. Description It was intended to 244 be open, simple, and have a sense of humor. What is Stonehenge? Stonehenge is perhaps the most famous megalithic structure from the Neolithic period. And an example of a large-scale cromlech. Its name comes from the Saxon language and means the place of hanging stones. The site, located near Salisbury in England, about 80 miles west of London, 
was built over a thousand years starting from around 3000 BCE 17 enormous megaliths weighing up to 50 tons each remain standing in an approximate circle. Those scholars think the site originally included at least 30 megaliths. Altogether, Stonehenge is made up of around 150 simple non-decorated stones, some of which have fallen down and broken. At the center of the site is an altar stone, though whether the stone was used as such is unknown. It is unclear exactly how Neolithic people constructed Stonehenge. The blocks alone are extremely difficult to move and both scholars and amateurs have attempted to recreate the engineering marvel. The post lintel system is evident in the megalithic hanges themselves. And it is notable that no mortar was used to hold them together all of the joints are dry joints. It is possible that timber played a role in the construction of Stonehenge. Though any timber remains have since disappeared. What is digital art? Digital art is art made by using digital technologies, such as a computer. Digital art is now more commonly referred to as new media art and can include two-dimensional images. Whether printed or not, made with software programs such as Adobe Photoshop, for example. Three-dimensional works, or even multimedia works such as animations or videos made using computer software. What is post-painterly abstraction? The term post-painterly abstraction was coined by influential American art critic Clement Greenberg. 1909-1994, to describe abstract art inspired by but separate from American abstract expressionism. His term encapsulated multiple categories 242 of abstraction. Including, but not limited to, Hard edge painting and stain painting. Hard edge painting, as exemplified by the work of artists Frank Stella, 1936, and Ellsworth Kelly, 1923, is characterized by large geometric areas of color with absolutely no blending. Colors transition abruptly from one to the next, such as in Stella's Grand Cairo. 1962, a painting composed of a colorful series of ever smaller square outlines. The artist Helen Frankenthaler is known for championing the technique of staining the canvas with pure color. Also considered to be a form of post-painterly abstraction. Post-painterly abstraction emphasizes the formal qualities of painting, such as shape and color. Artists experimented with shaped canvas, transforming the painting into an object, or sculpture. Post-painterly abstraction lasted until the 1970s when postmodern artists began to challenge the supremacy of modernist critic Clement Greenberg. What is a skyscraper?
A skyscraper is a tall, multi-story building with a steel frame and thin walls known as curtain walls because they are not load-bearing. Because the steel frame acts as a support skeleton. Skyscrapers are often covered in glass or windows, similar in some ways to a Gothic cathedral. While the earliest skyscrapers were built in Midwest cities such as Chicago and St. Louis, some of the most famous early skyscrapers are New York's Chrysler Building, 1930, and Empire State Building, 1931. Along with the development of skyscrapers came the need to introduce new fireproofing and elevator technology. What is picturesque? Though the literal meaning of picturesque is like a picture. The term refers to the aesthetically pleasing qualities of a painting that come from texture, lighting, composition, and engaging formal irregularities. During the 18th century, British painters found the 17th century landscapes of artists such as Nicholas Poussa and Jacob van Ruisdael to exemplify the picturesque due to their subtlety and mystery. So inspired, British architects even designed gardens after landscape paintings. And during the 19th century, Britain saw a surge in domestic tourism to such picturesque locations as the Lake District and the Scottish Highlands, which were made popular by romantic poets such as William Wordsworth and Sir Walter Scott. What is a pagoda? Derived from the Indian stupa. A pagoda is a tall tower notable for its repeated roof lines featuring upturned eaves. Pagodas are one of the most recognizable examples of East Asian architecture. Often found at the center of Buddhist temple complexes. Early pagodas were solid structures and therefore could not be entered. And were made of stone, brick, and wood. The Foghuang Si Pagoda in Yingxian, China, built in 1056 and designed to house relics, is still the tallest wooden building in the world at nine stories. What is mana? Mana is an important concept in much Pacific art that is essential. For understanding the power of art in many Pacific cultures. Mana is a sacred, spiritual power possessed by individuals and art objects alike. It is invisible but formidable, and the amount of mana one has is related to one's proximity to the gods. For example, a tribal chief and related nobles have mana because of their divine lineage. Mana can be gained or lost based on one's actions or behaviors. Such as through acts of strength or acts of cowardice, for example. The mana of a work of art is related to the status and skill of the artist who created the piece. As well as the materials used to make it, the age of the object, 
and the rituals for which it is used. What is medieval? The medieval period, also referred to as the Middle Ages, is the name given to the period of European history from the fall of the Western Roman Empire to the beginning of the Italian Renaissance in the 14th century. These terms are generally derogatory, and are linked to the humanist idea that the one thousand years between the classical age and the Renaissance were somehow dark or barbaric. In actuality, however, European art from this period was rich and innovative. Drawing inspiration from the diverse cultures thriving in Europe at the time. What is the Doric order? The Doric order was the earliest order to develop and did so towards the end of the 7th century B. C. It features a baseless column that supports a horizontal entablature. A Doric column is approximately five times as tall as it is wide. A ratio of 5 colon 1. The shaft of the column is fluted, which means it is decorated in shallow, vertical grooves. A Doric entablature rests atop the column, and features a decorative band called a frieze, which is decorated with alternating triglyphs and metopes. The Parthenon is an example of a building constructed according to the Doric order. The Parthenon, built of marble, is dedicated to Athena, the patron goddess of the city of Athens. It sits atop the Acropolis, a prominent hill in the center of the city, which also includes other architecturally significant structures. Built under the direction of the famous statesman Pericles in the 4th century BCE. The Parthenon was designed to represent Athens' self-proclaimed status as an enlightened and civilized center of the world. And celebrated the democratic Greeks' recent defeat of the Persian Empire. The exterior of the Parthenon was masterfully decorated with architectural sculpture on all sides and a 40-foot, gold-covered sculpture of Athena was erected on a pedestal in the center of the temple. What was Chichen Itza? Chichen Itza was an important pre-Columbian city built by the Maya and located in the eastern portion of the Yucatan Peninsula in modern-day Mexico. Chichen Itza is known for a large nine-level pyramid, which sits at the center of a main plaza. The pyramid is topped with a small, square temple accessible by four staircases one on each side of the structure. The site also includes ball-playing courts, palaces, and an astronomical observatory. The city flourished between 800 and 1200 CE, which places it mostly in the post-classic period of the Maya, the period just before European conquest of the area. The buildings are decorated with bright, colorful paintings and painted relief sculpture. 
Popular themes include animals such as jaguars, coyotes, eagles, serpents, and mythological figures. Also found at Chichen Itza are chikmuls. Altars in the shape of a reclining figure with hands resting at the sides. Chikmuls are common throughout Mesoamerica. What is the Venus of Urbino? Titian painted the Venus of Urbino for Guido Baldo della Rovera. The Duke of Urbino, in 1538. The painting is unabashedly erotic. Depicting a nude woman reclining on a disheveled white sheet covering deep red cushions. Her long, red hair sweeps around her neck and her hand rests gently along her hips only partially covering her sex. She stares teasingly from within the frame, a tiny dog curled near her feet. In the background of the painting, two women appear to be rifling through a chest, collecting clothing. There is no question, Titian has created a goddess. The provocative painting, part of a long tradition of female nudes in the history of art. Influenced artists even hundreds of years later. Manet's similarly bold, Olympia, 1863, would not exist without the Venus of Urbino. What is Great Zimbabwe? Great Zimbabwe was an important capital city of the Bantu-speaking Shona people between the 12th and 15th centuries, reaching its peak between 1250 and 1450 with an estimated Population of approximately 15,000 people and control over a large territory. Covering an area of nearly 2,000 acres, the ruined city of Great Zimbabwe is. Principally comprised of three structures, the hill complex, the valley ruins, and the great enclosure. Which are surrounded by a large protective wall, nearly 30 feet tall. The Great Enclosure, which dates from the mid-14th to 15th century, was made with a special pattern of dry stone blocks, a technique still used by contemporary builders, and is the largest stone structure in sub-Saharan Africa. Many sculpture and pottery fragments have been found at the Great Zimbabwe site indicating a rich art culture. A popular material for sculpture was soapstone, and many examples of soapstone bird carvings have been discovered. Though the exact significance of these sculptures is still unknown. What is brutalism? The term brutalism was coined in 1954 and refers to a style of modern architecture developed by L.E. Corbusier, who promoted the use of rough concrete and favored heavy forms. Reinforced concrete can take on sculptural qualities, as in L.E. Corbusier's design for Notre Dame du Haut. 1950-1954 with its flowing roofline and round, asymmetrical tower. 
brutalism was most popular during the 1960s and 1970s and coincided with the concept of art brut developed by artist Jean Dubuffet. What is Nouveau Realisme? New Realism Founded in 1960 by French art critic Pierre Restani, Nouveau Realisme is an art movement that developed as a reaction against 20th century abstraction and art informal. Many of the Nouveau Realists, or New Realists, were not painters, but artists who experimented with art forms such as decollage, a process of ripping or tearing an image. Usually posters of advertisements, to create something new. The best examples of Nouveau Realist Decollage is the Work of Francois Dufferin and Mimo Rotella, 1918-2006 The artist Jean Tingueli, 1925-1991, extended this technique to include scrap metal old bottles, motors, and other industrial objects in his work, Homage to New York, 1960, which he designed to spectacularly self-destruct at the Museum of Modern Art in New York. By contrast, Eve Klein, 1928-1962, was a painter who explored the power of pure color. Even developing his own blue, called International Klein Blue, 1 KB. The new realists used the objects of the real world, often junk, as their palette. And by doing so commented on modern life in a manner unique from other artists of the period. What are the rock churches of Lalabella? Lalabella was a medieval city in Ethiopia ruled by the Zagwa dynasty, which held power from 1137 until the end of the 13th century. The city was also an important Christian center and a popular pilgrimage route. And church building projects were possibly conceived of as the construction of a new Jerusalem in the Ethiopian mountains. At the behest of King Lalabella, Ethiopian Christians carved 11 churches out of red, volcanic rock. Some of which are freestanding while others are semi-detached and carved into rock walls. The churches are tall, narrow, and rectangular with a combination of arabesque and cruciform windows. These unique structures have been declared a UNESCO World Heritage site and remain an important site for Ethiopian Christians. What are Rajput paintings? Rajasthan, in northern India, was not part of the Mughal Empire's vast territory. Instead, it was controlled by Hindu Rajput rulers. Painting traditions in Rajasthan were influenced by Persian and Mughal miniature painting traditions and Popular subject matter included images of Hindu gods, such as Krishna, and were often romantic and erotic. In Krishna and Radha in a pavilion, see 1760, the Hindu god Krishna, 
commonly represented with blue skin, is caressing his lover. Radha, while a yellow bolt of lightning overhead symbolizes their sexual attraction. Who was Gustav Kurbe? Unlike Millet, Gustav Kurbe, 1819-1877, was open about being inspired by the 1848 revolutions in France. He was known for his socially radical beliefs and his loyalty to his hometown of Ornans. Near the border with Switzerland. He believed that artists could only authentically represent their own experiences and rejected traditional academic views on painting. He disliked history painting and believed that art could not be taught. His painting, The Stone Breakers, 1849, predates Millet's depiction of rural poverty. And similarly shows two laborers breaking large stones along the side of a road back breaking work. There are certain romantic elements to the painting, such as the sense of nostalgia for the simplicity of rural life. And like the gleaners, the faces of the workers are hidden. Some critics considered this painting a satire that juxtaposes demanding physical labor with the mechanical processes of the Industrial Revolution. The canvas is quite large for such a subject at nearly 9 feet long and 5 feet high. Even bigger was Courbet's A Burial at Ornans, 1849. Which depicted a countryside funeral and is over 21 feet long. It was heavily criticized for depicting something as mundane as a poor. Man's funeral on such a large scale, but that was exactly Courbet's point. The monumentality of the image brings dignity to the ordinary working class and to the rural countryside. What is the Raimondi Stila? The Raimondi Stila depicts a human-like jaguar deity and is an example of Chavin-style art from the Peruvian Andes in South America. The Chavin culture, considered a mother culture to later Peru, developed between 1500 and 300 BCE. And Chavin-style art emphasized complex abstract patterns and featured animals such as jaguars and eagles. The jaguar creature carved on the Raimondi Stila is known as the Staff God. It is depicted wearing an elaborate headdress made from stacked, serpentine monster heads. This interweaving image emphasizes balance and symmetry in its abstract design. What was the Russian realist movement? As in France, 19th century Russian artists were increasingly critical of the traditional approach to art promoted by the Academy of Arts. In a powerful show of protest, a large group of students, 13 in total, withdrew from the Academy and formed a group later known as the Pertvizniki, or the Wanderers. The Wanderers preferred art that was socially aware and 
promoted the values of the Russian working class and peasantry. Common themes in Russian realist art were peasant scenes, landscapes, and images of the Russian clergy. The group took their art on the road and traveled to towns and cities that would not normally attend the salons and galleries of St. Petersburg, creating uniquely accessible art. Artist members of the Wanderers included Ilya Rapin, 1844-1930, Vasily Perov, 1834-1882, Nikolai Ge, 1831-1894, and Ivan Kramskoy, 1837-1887, among others.